Welcome to this Killick Explains Finance video. This week, a very short introduction to a vast topic, what is asset allocation? Big piece of jargon, what does it mean? Well, in a nutshell, what are we trying to achieve here? This is a strategy that allocates money according to three things, essentially. Your personal milestones. I can't tell you what those are. Those are your goals, if you like, going out into the future. Number two, your risk tolerance. Some people are naturally comfortable with risk, others aren't. Some people need to be told to take more risk, others don't. Age and time scale, that's important. People who are very, very young, children for example, will have a completely different outlook, somebody who's about to retire, and so on. So, three ingredients in that melting pot. Now, the thought process is this. Asset allocation is the stuff you do before worrying about which individual securities you're gonna buy. This is not, do I buy BP or Shell? Asset allocation is the top level vital decision about where your assets will be divided. How much will go into stocks? How much into bonds and cash? how much into property. Now, given that most people will try to own their own home, that often takes care of their property allocation. So we're looking therefore here at the split between stocks and let's say bonds and cash. Now, once you've allocated your assets, then by all means worry about individual security selection. Do I buy a fund? Do I run a portfolio and so on? But that very much comes second. Get your asset allocation right first, and then that comes afterwards. Now, asset classes. Just a reminder, I'm only talking about the conventional ones here, but worth bearing in mind, there are some more woo-ah-leary ones out there. All right, those I'm gonna to leave to one side for the purposes of this video. Let's look at core asset allocation principles. Now, types of asset allocation. You will see these words banded around. Strategic, first of all. Well, let's say shares have returned 5% and bonds 2% historically, completely for illustration. Typically, those shares do tend to return more than bonds over, say, a 50, 60-year period. So, a 90-10 portfolio, purely for illustration, this would be 90%, the bulk of it in shares, a little bit in bonds. That's got an annual expected return of 4.7%. I made up the number for illustration. Now, if you were to bring down the number of shares, increase the number of bonds, you would correctly expect normally that to drop. And let's say it does to 3.5%. So you could choose that, you could choose that, or you could go for 30-70 more bonds and shares. All right, and there, your annual expected return is only 2.9%. Now you might say, how would you choose between those three asset allocation strategies, let's say? Well, it will depend. All right, some people might say, well, I'd go for one at the bottom, 4.7, that beats 2.9. Hang on a minute, what if you only need 2.9%? Right, that is enough for you, and you don't want to take the risk of running a heavily equity-based portfolio over the short term. Well, then you might go for number one rather than number three. Right, but if you're very young, looking to have an aggressive investment strategy, then you might go for number three rather than number one. All right? Or you could compromise somewhere in the middle, or you might find over different stages of your life, the mix varies. So you might start there and slide up to more like that. So all requires a little bit of judgment, basically, about what you're trying to achieve and how much risk you can stomach. Now, tactical is saying, right, I've got my strategic mix in mind, but I could make deviations on a short-term basis. Not saying you have to, but you might do. This aims to boost the overall portfolio returns by recognizing that at certain points in the cycle, some asset classes are more attractive than others, all right, and it adjusts the mix accordingly over the short term. So essentially what we're saying is you can identify, identify turning points where sometimes bonds are expected to rise against shares and vice versa. So typically, in a bad bull mar bear market, if you like, Bonds do well, shares do badly. In a bull market, the reverse is true. So you can adjust for markets that are over undervalued accordingly. And then there's dynamic, which recognizes, as I just hinted, that over time, your portfolio might be rebalanced and the mix might shift. So one mix won't be appropriate at all times. The mix you have when you're young may not be the same as the one you want pre-retirement or into retirement, for example. It'll take account of your shifting risk appetite and personal milestones, because they will change. It's not market timing though. We're not talking about dipping out and into the market altogether, more about taking advantage of the fact that your objectives will shift over time and maximizing your asset allocation accordingly. Now, rebalancing, I mentioned that just now. What is it? It aims to maintain a certain target asset allocation. So for those people new to the term, let's say your aim is 70% equities, 30% bonds and cash. That's your strategy. Shares do well. So they rise to more like 80% of the portfolio. Now, if you left it like that, you'd be left with a kind of 80-20 portfolio, which wasn't your original goal. That's changed the risk return balance slightly. So rebalancing would be selling some of your equities to get back to 
How often you do that requires a bit of judgment. Do it too often and you'll incur excess costs. Don't do it often enough and you might skew your portfolio away from your optimum asset allocation. Okay, so a broad framework within which this asset allocation takes place would be, we want rainy day funds set aside in cash and short duration bonds for emergencies and to stop us selling and liquidating our long-term funds at the wrong time. For our milestone-based funds, we use a mixture of bonds and equities, depending on how far out in the future they actually arise. And for our lifetime savings, we want to be mainly or all in equities. A lot of ground covered in a very short space of time there. Any questions, editor at killick.com. And to see videos that explore some of these themes in a bit more detail, killick.com forward slash learn.